guys. Okay, so today, this is going to be such a good video if you love beauty. I've got so many good beauty videos coming up and we'll discuss. But I have gotten into, I mean at this point, right, we should be in a good groove. But I still have those times where I go back and forth with my makeup like, I can't get this right. Like this doesn't look right. Like what? But then you get in those grooves sometimes where you really look at yourself and you're like, wow, this is good. Like, I am in a good, like, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like I've been like that lately. I feel like my makeup's in a really good spot. I have really found some great products. Um, things that I don't think you guys have seen before. A lot of things that are just amazing for people that are breakout prone from, like, a stick contour that's not going to clog your pores, which, which will not clog your pores, which is so hard to find. They're also, like wax based or they've got coconut oil or products that are just full of talc and like things that you don't realize will cause pimples and break you out if you're looking at your skin texture and you're like oh I'm, I don't have acne but it looks a little rough like you can fix that like you've got to just use the right products I have a skincare video coming up I don't know if it's gonna be next week or the next that is just I mean game changers and as I get older you know I'll be 39 in a few months and I've really taken skincare seriously always. I'm, you know, using things that are anti-aging, so nourishing, but that also aren't going to cause my acne prone skin um, or skin that's very prone to like clogging and I get milia, you know, it's a whole thing that milia, you know, there's just those little bumps under the skin that then, you know, months later will turn into like the biggest like soul crushing that you've ever seen. No, okay, we, we don't need to do that. You can eliminate that. And so all of these products are working really well with my skin. Um, I'm gonna share with you guys so many tips for the under eye, a product that will blur your under eye, kind of like a, it's something I've never seen before for the under eye area, but I, I filmed this morning, like I said, in real time. I'm gonna kind of go back and forth as I discuss these products, but speaking of like what's coming up next week, or the next. I don't know which video I'm going to do next, but I'm going to do a video, as I said, about like skincare, okay, game changers, things that you haven't seen, and things I've been using a little more long term. Things like maybe I've picked up in the last like, couple months. You will never find me get something and be like, wow, let me talk about this. Because so many things that I've found over the years that are just amazing skincare things. I'm like, oh, this is great. You use it, and you're like, wow, this is wonderful. And then a month later, your skin is terrible. So you can't do things or turn around reviews so fast. Oh, I tried it two weeks. This is great. Like, no, it takes a long time for like acne to develop, for, you know, pore clogging things to kind of build up over time. I know it's gross, but I'm just saying like, we just, I'm going to keep it real. I really want to just let you guys in on so many amazing things. It's just so much fun. It's like you're sitting and I, this has been me from, from 15 years ago, just chatting with a girlfriend, sharing all the good things. I just feel, I don't know, I just feel so good about what's coming up and excited. I am going to do a video, as I mentioned in my last one, about procedures. And not just to be like, oh, look at this. Let me, you know, capitalize on me being so transparent. Look how open and transparent I am. Hear all about my, you know, my breast augmentation or how much Botox I get or come with me. Okay. I do that not to look, oh, wow, look how great I am for sharing this. But like, I want to share this with you guys. If something's good, I'm like, go, go, like, this is what you need to do, like, or this is what you don't need to do. And this is, this works, you know, we'll talk about cool sculpting, talk about, you know, certain facials that I've gotten. This works, this doesn't. And the misconceptions, and if you do want to get those things, what you need to look for. And just, I think things that are going to be really good, um, I don't say like resources, but yeah, like, you know, maybe I've tried these things so you don't have to or so that you can, right? Um, so anyways, we're going to get into that, but I think this is going to be so much fun. I had so much fun getting all these things together and just talking about beauty. I'm so excited. So I'm going to link to everything that I'm wearing. I love this. This is that 90s dress from a recent video. I call it like my 90s dress, right? Um, and I'll, just, I'll link to everything as we go. Okay, so when I get ready in the morning, first thing that I do, you know, I, I'll wash my face. I might put on some moisturizer and some eye cream. And then I may not do my makeup right away, right? So this is the moisturizer that I've been using. This is the La Mer Moisturizing Soft Lotion. I'm very big on pore clogging ingredients. I have this resource from a company that I've never actually bought their skincare from, okay? Just to be totally transparent. I think it's called Clear Stem or whatever. I'll link to, this is just always open in a tab on my phone. Anything I buy, any skincare, I run the ingredients through this and it will flag any pore clogging ingredients. Now, 
In this, there is one ingredient. I can, I've used bottles and bottles. This is probably my third bottle of this and my skin has never had any issues. You might, I don't know. Um, and the ingredient is kind of toward the bottom. Now, if it's like the first ingredient or if it's coconut oil or something, I don't mess with that, okay? Or talc being the number one. Oh, it's a powder. Powders will wreck your, those little molecules will clog when they mix with your oil and create cement, okay? I'm just telling you, let's change the vibe. And I'm gonna show you the things that you can use that won't do that, okay? Um, okay, so this is what I've been using, but I just used my last pump of it today. It is ridiculously expensive, and I do have something else that I think I might like better. And then I do this just to kind of, you know, I ice roll in the morning when I go down and make my smoothie. Um, sometimes on top of if I've already done the moisturizer, sometimes I'll do this after, I don't know. But use the moisturizer after I wash my face, and then this is really great. It is um, the Cryo Recovery Eye Serum. Eyes appear depuffed, brighter, and awake. And if you've got that little puff in the morning, this is no joke. There's so many woo-woo, there's so much woo-woo mess out there, okay? Look at how magical, no, no. Some things actually do work. This is one of them, okay? That actually really does work in face rolling, okay? Roll with a nice roll in the morning, change your life. And then I always use these eye drops. I'm just going through the things that aren't pictured in the video, in the, um, the how-to that you're gonna see. The Lumify, I live by this. I swear by this stuff. I love it. I use it in my eyes every morning and it really just brightens. If you have a zit or like something that's really red, you can put a little bit of that on a Q-tip and hold it. I remember years ago, you'd see like in Cosmo, they said, oh, put Visine on a Q-tip. Sure. This stuff is so whitening that it does suck the redness out. You could hold it on for just a second and you know, it's gone. Okay. So, I mean, the zit's not gone, but the redness will be taken down. That stuff is so now let's get into it. So when I start to do my makeup, this is a product that is truly a game changer. It's the Elemis Pro Collagen Eye Revive Mask. I had never seen anything like this or a product that is like this. You see like eye patches, right? Which is what I was looking for when I bought this because nothing compares to the, uh, to the Elemis eye patches. If you ever find those, scoop them up, they're good. But I saw this and I was like, okay, I'll try it. It was a little expensive, but I will never be without this. You need just a tiny bit and it comes with so much. This will last you forever. You can put this over or you can layer a heavier eye cream over this if you want. I don't know. I never feel like I have to, but I smooth this on. It almost works as a primer. It like blurs any crepiness, any fine lines, any areas that look, you know, like those little bumpies that you get right here. You just, you know, that area that looks a little funny sometimes, like the texture. It blurs. It's beautiful and your makeup will just go so beautifully over it. This has, this has just been a game changer and you can put a little bit of it, you know, your crow's feet area. I always use this. This is almost like a lid primer for me and people, you know, I think kind of go the opposite direction with eyelid primer. Oh, I've got really oily lids. I've got to put something on that's going to suck the life out of my eyelids. And then we wonder why our eyelids are droopy and crepey and sucked dry looking by the time we're like 35 or 40 or 50. I mean, can you imagine? You know what I'm saying? We got, we know, okay, we get it. This is good, okay? I've used probably, I probably use this for a decade, countless bottles of it, the eyelid lift serum. I just dab a little bit on, I smooth it on. And then, you know, I'm not applying so much eye product to where it would crease. I do that whole method with foundation, with anything, with all of these, tr you know, less is more. You've gotta get the products that actually work well so you don't have to pile up so much. For my foundation, I use the pop off sponge. Y'all know, okay, we don't need to get into it, okay? You know my history with the Beauty Blender. You know my history with every, okay, we get it. This is the best, okay? You get a ton of, ton of these for eight bucks. And um, it's truly the same material as the Beauty Blender. It's the same um, softness. You can't have a Beauty Blender dupe based on color and size and shape alone. It's what it does when it gets wet and how it distributes the product. There's so much more to it than just how it looks. And this is I think these are probably even better than a beauty blender. And they come out to be like, I think once you get the whole bag, like less than a dollar each, I don't know. You can use them for a long time. And then I'm using the Clinique Acne Solutions Liquid Makeup. Don't let this fool you, or don't let this make you scared, okay? Sounds like it'd be a product that like sucks the life out of your skin. It doesn't. It's such a beautiful foundation. Um, you don't have to have full-blown acne or anything to like justify using this. It's just one that's gonna really, you know, not break you out so you don't have to be afraid of it so it's really great the coverage is amazing so i use that all over um you know apply that and then my under eye 
concealer the best so you need such a small amount i put some on the inner corners i always put this on the inner corner of my eye my eyelid um, i keep a lot of it just to that area and then when i apply it i blend it of course on my eyelid and on the outer corner first but then when i'm blending on this area like on the under part of my eye i almost pull it down never up toward my lash line because that's the area where it gets a little tricky with showing those fine lines and that's where your concealer is really gonna settle so i would say pull the concealer to pull but you know concentrate it downward you don't need all of that brightness around your eyelid your lower eyelid and i'm going to show you a really great trick with your eyeshadow to make that look really really good and then i go in to my bronzer now bronzers oh my goodness so hard to find ones that are not going to cause pimples and clogged pores i swore by the chanel one for years and they started adding the coconut oil I've used different other, you know, cream-based ones, a lot of different stick ones that to begin with, I'm like, wow, this is so great. But then you run them through that little search thing and you see there's some questionable things. I'm like, oh no, it'll be fine. And then sure enough, if you've got like a weird skin texture here, like on your blush line or on your contour line or like where, you know, your cheek products go, cheek products are so commodogenic I don't really know how to pronounce that commodogenic whatever they're pore clogging there's so many pore clogging ingredients in those it's hard to find good ones especially for me like I want one that's a cream based the Charlotte Tilbury cream bronzer the powder airbrush bronzer does have um it does cause me a little bit of, of pimples it's very fine milled it's talky um but the cream one is great but it settles in lines so you can't use it on your neck i'm going to show you the bronzer i use on my neck in a second that's amazing but i do love i do love a um a gel or a, a cream formula and they're just more fun to use like the stick ones so this merit brand is formulated really to be like simple but without the pore clogging ingredients so i will say i challenge you to find another stick that checks out in that little database because you won't okay because i have and i've made myself crazy and this is a very good one it comes in so many different colors i use the shade clay and you know i do it kind of in just the basic area where you apply bronzer or contour okay we're not gonna like layer up a million different things but i just put it right on my you know forehead right around my hairline temples basic you know cheekbone contour area and then a swipe right at the jawline and right under like where your like double chin would be that you don't I mean it's not like trying to cover everything it, but it's just if you've got all this bronzer happening on your face you have to have it appearing somewhere else you can't just be like bronze faced and then nothing it's gotta like kind of all make sense that's why I that's why it's a good idea to apply a little there too. So then I blend it in and I use this brush, which is the Trish McAvoy Wet Dry Brush, which I have been raving about for years. The best brush. That's such a great foundation brush, but I like to use a sponge for foundation. But this is so great for blend blending in cream contour, cream blushes, and this product blends like a dream. And like I said, it comes in a lot of different colors too. So then, now if you wanted, like sometimes if you see me, I look really bronze, like that's plenty. You can add a little bit of this. I love these iconic glow drops. I'll take just, it's a little dropper. I didn't do it today because I just wanted you to truly see what that merit stick did on its own. Um, but then what I'll do is I'll just go and just touch a little there and layer a little more over and it's just like extra bronzy and good. This is a great, great product. Um, but then I go in with my blush and again, cream blushes can be very tricky. <laughs> Oh my gosh, like I never broke out on my cheeks for years until I started using a lot of these, these new different things, you know. And so now I'm finally glad that I found some good ones that are cream based that will not break you out. Okay, so this one you guys have seen me show this before. I have the color Beverly Hills as well. This is the color Cheeky. And I think this is probably the most universally flattering out of all of the shades that they have. It's not too light. It's not too dark. The tone is perfect. It's not like baby doll fake pink. And it's not too brown or too peach or too tan. It's perfection. So I like to use it just, you know, you could just go like draw it right on your cheeks. You can take another brush and kind of, you know, do that and then apply it. Such a good product, you guys. But this color is beautiful. And again, no pore clogging ingredients. And you don't feel heavy or sticky. 
it's like nothing, okay? But all the color payoff. I love this powder blush, and you'd think powder blushes would be really easy to find. Like, oh, powder blushes are much less pore clogging. Much of them, most of them, the first ingredients talc, and that's hard. And I know you're gonna think, Tiffany, there's some things that I use that have it. I'm just saying, you gotta pick and choose but I'm really breakout prone lately in my cheek area, so I have to be very careful. This is an amazing blush. Of course, when I saw Armani Luminous Silk, which is one of my you know, favorite concealers of all time, my, one of my favorite foundations, when they came out with these new blushes, I knew I had to try one, so I have the shade 50, and they have a bunch of different ones. If you look at the ingredients on this, this is the lowest amount of ingredients I think I've ever seen in a blush, and the payoff is beautiful. Um, this is kind of like a shimmery peachy color and you don't have to layer it over but sometimes I'll just layer a little bit right over my blush if you just want an extra pop and especially talking about all of these more like skin loving you know non pore clogging products it's more important I feel especially where I'm from in the south in summertime it gets humid hot and the makeup will if it is more pore clogging it's going to be more prone to break you out and all the heat and the sweat so I think it is important to kind of start thinking about adjusting some of these products that are a little, you know, that will love your skin a little more. Skin texture is so important. Pimples, pore clogging things will wreck it. And even if you think, like I said, you don't have full blown acne, you could still have a really rough skin texture because of some things that you're using. Okay, let's continue. Listen, you guys, it's just a lot, okay? Um, okay, what else? For the eyes, I like to be very simple with this. So I've used so many things from stick creams to every palette under the sun. So I just don't like to bl be blending and doing all that. We don't need it, okay? There's easier ways to do things. This product I really love. It's the um, the moussey, you know, these, it feels like mousse eyeshadow, the Eyes to Mesmerize by Charlotte Tilbury. This shade is so great. It used to be Bet, but now I believe it's like golden amber or something. I'll put the exact color below, okay? Because, again, this is my old, old, old lady one that I found because I went through one of the new ones. And then I found this and I was like, I'm using it, okay. It's perfect, it's not too cool, it's not too coppery or warm. This brush is so unique and such a must have. It's the Westman Atelier eyeshadow brush. I will link to all these exact ones. But it's almost like a little fluffy stipple. You know, put that on your eyelid, blend it up into the crease, and then the big key here for this whole like, you know, flattering under eye look that really will camouflage those under eye lines you're gonna do that right under like where your eyelashes would cup over your lower lash lid, okay? Does that make sense? Lower eyelid. A thick amount, okay? Like like you would smudge an eyeshadow, but I don't want powder down there. I don't, drawing is not the vibe when it comes to anti-aging or ca camouflaging wrinkles, but then you see people just powdering, powdering, powdering. That's fine, but that's not, and I have oily skin, okay? It's not a step that you have to do. And if you use good products, they shouldn't melt off your face. I'm sorry. And again, I live in the South. It's humid. Just trust me, okay? Well, you'll be fine. So take that and really smudge it under the lash line. And then it's like, that is done. Like, that's a good enough eye look. I do like to then take, again, like to set it, okay? Or just to add some extra dimension or extra color. This is an eyeshadow palette that I really do like. I swear by this. If I had to get rid of all my eyeshadows and just keep one, I'd probably just keep this. It's the Disco Dust. And I take this big fluffy brush, which is amazing. This is such a good eyeshadow brush. Into that more natural color, sweep it across my, um, the area that would crease, right? Like my, what am I trying to say? Like my crease, okay? Um, but it's, they're just, I take another eyeshadow brush, like a little smaller. I'll link to all the ones. I love this eyeshadow brush so much, you guys. And I use that same color and I layer it right over um, the little mousse that I put under there. You know, it's not right on top of the skin. It's not just tons of powder caked on. It's just kind of on top of that. Um, and these are very silky, beautiful powders. Now, then I'll go in with my eyeliner, and I've been loving this. It's the Maybelline Unstoppable and Espresso. Just kind of a messy line, honestly, right hugging your you know upper lash line, okay? You don't have to be so careful. And then I take this brush, which I really love. It is the E57. I love this brush for smudging. And I smudge that line. It's just perfect. A little bit of mascara. I've really been loving this Too Faced Better Than Sex. It's the chocolate. Is it chocolate? No, it's just brown. Chocolate brown? I think it's chocolate. I don't know. They have those chocolate eyeshadow palettes. I have dark features, and I would have never thought about using a brown 
mascara. This is so good. This is this is what I've been using lately, and I just love the look of accentuating your lashes in a way that doesn't make them look like wet. I nothing worse than when you see like lash ads where the lashes just look wet and like little spot. I like them to look full and fluffy, you know, almost like a like a lash extension look, you know. They never look like they have mascara or anything wet or clumpy. It's just fluffy lashes. Um, and sometimes I'm like, does this look a little much? Okay, whatever. Let's just go with it. But, you know, if they do, you can use a little spoolie and really kind of like, you know, fluff them out and get those. I wonder, see, I don't really, I, I've always used this. Even when I was in high school, I remember I always would use a lash spoolie after I would use my mascara. And I'm like, I don't really see a lot of people doing that. And it makes such a huge difference. Oh my gosh, don't keep styling your lashes with more mascara. Just if something's going weird, you just use that, you know, and it makes them look better. Um, where are we? Okay, so I think, did I do my highlighter? Oh, I don't think, did I talk about my highlighter? Let me do that before I talk about my eyebrows. Um, you could use a cream highlighter. People say, oh, layering powders and creams powders. I, you know, it just, it's what works. And the things that I've used so far are so lightweight. Um, and really not a lot of things layered over the same area over and over. If I were to use like a liquid highlighter, which there's so many that I like, or ones that are in a stick, and you're just applying, it's wiping off everything beneath it. And sometimes I just like a good, I do always, just like a good powder highlight, but they're very hard to find. Like I feel good ones. And I always just go back to this one. It's the um, Matte Radiance, which is not matte at all, which I don't understand. This is the highlighter that I've always used. And look at the shade, I mean, it's beautiful. And the shade is Highlight 01. And I'll link my highlight brush that I really love. Just such a perfect, this looks like a cream. It has the effect of a cream, it doesn't look like a powder. It's just the best product, I love that. Y'all know I've, I've talked about that for years, it's so great. And then for my eyebrows, I have found such a great product. Um, it's the ELF Instant Lift Brow Pencil, and I believe the shade that I'm using is Neutral Brown. So I've been using, you know, the Trish McAvoy, the little bitty ones. I bought a Dior one that's teeny tiny. Those go so fast. And I'm like, I'm sick of spending an exorbitant amount for literally a speck of product, whether it works well or not. I mean, this is this is great, okay? So it's the e.l.f., and I'm sure you guys have seen this before. A lot of e.l.f. products, like, you know, they're, they're hyped up because of the price. But again, like, I just, even if something is very inexpensive, I'm, that's never going to sway me if it's not great. And... I just have never found a ton of e.l.f. products that I love, that I love enough to tell you guys, like, because to me, even if it's $5, I'm not going to tell you spend $5 and something that sucks. I'd rather say, go spend $55 on this. It's very good. And I know that's expensive, and that's a lot of money, but I'm still not recommending junk just because it's cheap. This is better. This is probably better than... Well, it's my favorite right now. As I say, it's, it's, the best eye, it's the best eyebrow pencil I've ever tried. And it's got the spoolie on the end, which is essential. The, the, there's a lot of product. Um, I love the formula. And the shade is just really nice. So it's a great, great eyebrow pencil. And again, and the packaging, I really, really love. It feels very substantial and nice sometimes when you buy. Again, sometimes some of these like drugstore brands have gotten so unhinged with the packaging. Like, why does everything need to look like a cartoon? And why does everything feel so cheap? It doesn't need to. These brands are making more money, probably, than, like, Chanel. Give us a nice, give us a nice packaging. You can do it, okay? They've done that with this. It's really nice. I'm trying to think back to the order to which I did things. Okay. Let's just talk about the lips next. Um... So this is just a must. I feel so bad because when I was really raving about this, I was like, it's called this. It's the Kind Words, Kind Words Lip Pencil. I thought that was the color. It's not. It's just that's what all of her lip liners are called, Kind Words Lip Liner. But then they all have a different name. And everyone's like, what's the color? I'm like, it's called Kind Words, guys. I already said it. But then I realized, oh, no, I messed up. So it's called... Wow, we maybe that's why I didn't say it because you know what? It's not even flipping on here. Oh, it is. Okay. Worthy. This is the color that you want. I love this lip pencil. This will be a rebuy, like again and again. Again, the Rare Beauty is something that I haven't found a lot of product. And I've bought several of the products. I'm not going to show them and be like, oh, look at, or this sucks because I don't know, but I just haven't found many that I love or that are worth talking about. This is a really good one. I love that it just rolls up. 
It's the perfect color. It's just the perfect lip liner to have, obviously, to do your makeup with at home, but then also to put in your purse. I hate to put a lip liner in my purse, typical lip liners that are the ones that you have to sharpen. You don't have a sharpener on the go, and then you're just like, Ugh. this is a good one that you can always bring with you, which I love. Now, on my lips today, I am wearing this. It is the, the Lip Sleek in Fiswa. Okay. These are so good. I've talked about these before. I love these. So when you see me, most of the time I'm wearing one of these. The, the feet swa is good. And then this is the shoe shutter. And this one's a little more um, like a beige. And then I also have one that's really pink. These are so, so good because I'm not a huge like lipstick lover. I'm a lip liner person and then put on some, you know, a clear gloss or just put on something like a or a lip gloss or something. I don't like a goopy lipstick, and these aren't. They're technically lipsticks, but they're almost like a, th they're very thin, I don't know. They're just really nice, and they stay on really well. Again, to kind of like match this vibe that I have of my face. I, I don't wanna have like, you know, bronzer on my face and then a white neck or whatever. This is amazing for your neck. It doesn't settle into your lines. As you get older, that's like a whole thing. I mean, if you're a human being and you're gonna be like moving around at all, you're gonna, whatever you put on your neck, if you use like a big bronzer, or you use like that cream or you think, you're gonna, it's gonna settle, okay? This is very good because it's waterproof, okay? It stays put, it doesn't really like rub off on things. I mean, of course, I'm not gonna like put this all over and then put on a white turtleneck or something, but if you've got like a lot showing or you know whatever it's a good idea this is like the biggest brush ever it's the big ultimate bronze brush which is way too big for me to use on my face and I got a big old face but this is a really good body brush I do not use the same brush on my neck because I don't use usually products that I use on my neck on my face I've used this one on my face and it's really good I think it has talc in it but I don't know just okay whatever you guys it's a beautiful bronzer but it works really well on my neck so I use the bronzer brush I kind of overlap where I applied the contour a little really kind of blend on my neck and just very gentle to set my makeup which isn't really like to set it because you don't really need anything okay I've got you know the airbrush setting spray I've got that dewy set I've used the urban decay setting mist some of those really make your face feel like you know um my fave 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 is the Chanel Hydra Beauty mist so good it's so expensive I wish it was I wish it were cheaper I can't always justify buying that this is not the cheapest thing either but I really love this I used to use this back in the day and I went back to it um, it's the Caudalie Beauty Elixir and it is pretty it smells like sea breeze I feel like it's alcohol based yes that's like one of the first ingredients it's got like peppermint oil it's got some oils in it whatever oils aren't always pore clogging okay so many things I use on my skin and things that enter you enter into that pore clogging database thing and oils are not the enemy. Certain ones are, so I don't know, maybe there's some things in here, but it's fine. I mean, I haven't had an issue, but anyways, I spray it on. It's really kind of, um, I'm gonna use some now, which is great. It's really refreshing. I just love the way it smells. And I feel like, I don't know, because of the oils, the ingredients are just like, it's very pepperminty. It just wakes you up. It's so refreshing. And I just feel like it does make your skin kind of glow, kind of wakes you up, you know, kind of wakes up your skin. And then what else? Um, I I am obsessed with these little clips. In my swimsuit video, was it swimsuit? I don't know. One of my recent videos, I talked about these Skims clips. Now, I don't really care. The logo doesn't really, like, stick out. I mean, it's sparkly, but, like, you don't look at it and say, oh, that says Skims. Like, you you know, because I don't want to, I don't want But when it's, it's just beautiful. But the clip itself, you guys... So good. So when I bought those swimsuits, this was just something I was like, okay, you know, I bought the green, so I'll throw in the green. The green's really pretty. And I got the blonde shade. And then when I got them, just something about the clip is just, it's so well made. I have these French clips that my friend Lorraine sent me from her store in a gift, like, years ago. And I don't remember what the brand is. I believe it, like, had rubbed off, but I think they were called, like, the French Atelier or something. And... They had that feel of like a nice, thick resin. Is that the word? Not like a little thin. That's what these feel like. And just about the shape of them, how they're like flat. And they're, 
They really hold your hair so well. The clips hold very, very tight and they're comfortable and your hair will stay up all day. I don't do a really like, oh, this is how you do it and get it just perfect. My, It's never perfect, okay? I like it parted down the middle, but it's probably hair hanging out in the back. I don't care, but I just have been loving my hair like this lately. Um, and I like a plastic clip versus a metal clip. There are some good metal clips that I found lately, but I do think these are really nice. They're not breaking off my hair. So anyways, I got those and then ordered a pair of shoes, I think in that order that then came in the wrong size. And then when I swapped them, they charged me for the other ones, but then gave me store credit for the others. So I'm like, okay, I need to get something. Let me get the rest of all the clips. So that's what I did. So I think I've got the brunette or the redhead. I can't tell the difference because they're okay. So there's a blonde. There's the green, which is a little different and fun. There's a brunette and a redhead, which I don't know which one I have. They, they look almost exactly the same. And then um, I put the redhead one in Libby's hair the other day. It was really cute. And then the black. So I've got all these clips, you guys. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous, but I'm like, I need to spend it on something. I'm sorry about these sound bowls. Next time I'll move them. As far as everything else I'm wearing, I'll link to my hoops. I kind of gave small hoops a, um, you know, I kind of bashed them a little bit because I'm, I, you know, I'm just so used to wearing large hoops and I'm like, you know, it's dinky now. When I put on a small hoop, I'm like, this is silly. But you guys, I'm kind of really into them. <laughs> like now I'm like eating my words. I'm really loving these smaller hoops. These are the small version of, they're literally called the badass hoops and they're the hoops that I wear all the time. They're so beautiful. And when I saw that they had like a one inch version, I was like, okay, I'll try those. I really love them. But when I wear small hoops, I always like to put a hoop in my second hole. So I'll link to these. And oh, I had so much fun catching up today and talking about these beauty products. I hope that y'all enjoyed it and that you'll be inspired maybe to try a few things and have fun with your makeup. Again, makeup something. I take time for myself pretty much every day to do, even if it's just, I got 30 seconds, I'm gonna put on some mascara. But I am a makeup person. Put, you know, I would rather do a full face of makeup and spend 30 minutes, 20 minutes, and then put my hair in a clip and call it a day. Then like do the most. You know, I think if you get the makeup right, you're good. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this and um, we'll be covering skin and all of these other things coming up because again, that's like the base for all of this. I think that's so important. So I hope this was helpful, you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you soon.